the time has come. The Alice Chammers. Alright, so, 212 Alice Chalmers. This build was inspired by, I believe it's Red Oak Ridge Farm and Key Farm. I've seen them both doing all this, and well, I gotta give you a little backstory on why I did this Alice Chalmers and not another one, like a farm all or something like that. It's mostly because. My grandpa had a WC Alice Chalmers, just the WD. And the WD has the hydraulics, the PTO, all that. So, that was the main reason it was WD. Now, let me give you a little walkthrough on what's all done down here, because this is the main question everyone wants answered. What is going on down here to drive this whole deal? Alright, for starters... You want to go ahead and order yourself one of these. It took mine a little, little bit to get in. So you want to get yourself a pillow block. No questions asked. Then, these are gears. Differentials, actually. Out of Sears Suburban 633A transaxles. You can get all the spacers, the gears, out of those. And actually, the engine's propped up on 633 spider gears, too. The pulley is a 3 inch, the bottom pulley is a 8 inch, and that allows me to have like a two, well, 1 to 2 point something, but it's backwards because, well usually you want your bigger pulley, but it's backwards on this. So this whole setup here would get us a 2 point, it's like 2.57 or something like that ratio on this. And this is just one of them simple little weld in pulleys. I wouldn't recommend them. I'd recommend getting a solid pulley instead of doing the weld ends. The weld ends I haven't had good luck with, but the top one's a solid one. It works perfect. Now let's take a little gander over here. I put this on the other day. It's not hooked up yet because I have to build a thing on this. These Alice Chalmers from stock came with a 6 volt generator. This is a 12 volt off another Sears Suburban. And I'm going to hook this starter generator up to this 212. So, as soon as I get my battery, I can wire up my lights, I can wire up my field lights, and possibly I'm going to be sticking a winch on the front of this, just for moving stuff around, you know? Because this thing's going to get used. And the first thing I'm going to use it on is a bush hog. We have a whole bunch of three-point attachments, and... I'll get more into that in just a second. Let me finish up here. But anyway, it's this is not fully set up yet. I just have it tied up to a rope up there for right now. We're going to actually make the pedal work. But, waiting on pieces to get all that done. Plasma cutter broke the other day. But anyway, now I know you're all looking at this, thinking, what in the world? I am not a perfect welder. I am good enough. It works. It's solid, it's good to go. It's it's not the greatest thing, but it, it works. I'm not, you know, trying to win any prize medals here. But anyway, more on attachments. Whoa, just about dropped the phone there. All right, now we move around to the back of the tractor. This has the Alice Chalmers snap coupler. Yes, I know, I need to get these all rebuilt. But... What I'm going to get for this thing, and I'm actually going to probably be picking it up either this week or next, is a three-point hitch that goes into the snap coupler and clips down there. So then we can just use regular three-point attachments and not snap coupler attachments. Because on the farm, we have more regular three-point attachments than snap coupler. Actually, we don't even have any snap coupler. And let's see. What else should we talk about? Up here. So... If you've ever driven Alice Chalmers, you know that your throttle's up here and you're supposed to move it down to where it's at right now. But, let's take a little walk back up here to the front of the motor. 
if you see here, we did use the original shaft. Oh, shoot. Nope, it goes in here. Right down to here. And this functions off of this. So when I move this up, that rod pushes forward. And that throttles the engine up. So, we have that hooked up. I'm in the process of hooking the choke up, too. Because we're going to have electric start. So, everything will be able to be functioned from up here. And right here is going to be what's going to turn that starter generator on. And then these are going to be for the lights. You got just your regular front beams. And then turn it again, you got your field lights. Good to go. I need to fix field brakes. And I would show you all that the hydraulics work, but I can't. Due to the fact of all these lines are just rotted out. I mean, I feel like if I tried to try and move the hydraulics, it'd probably just blow, blow a line instantly. But, without further ado, I know you all want to see the thing run. And this is a cold start. I have not ran the thing today. I just uncovered it. So, let's fire her up. Let's make sure she's out of gear first. We don't want to get run over by that. Give her a second. Then we'll fire her up while she's warming up here. This is one cool thing about having this tractor, and that's the PTO is inside the transmission, so it still functions with this 212. As you can see, oh shoot, didn't get it out all the way, did I? Or no, the transmission's just not engaged. Let me engage the trans real quick. There we go. It will spin the PTO shaft. Now, we have to disengage that real quick. Which, yeah, you have to walk up here and you have to pull it out sometimes. But it's alright. While well, that heats up, something else that people really want to know is how is it moving this tractor. Now, all Chalmers was smart. There's a gear up here, a tiny gear, and a big gear down here. Gear reduction. So when this thing is moving, it's not the fastest thing, but it's real strong. So, let's fire, or let's... Let's go ahead and jump up on here and try and drive this thing. Ugh. Put her in first. You always want to rev her up a little bit. A little bit of belt slip. Other than that, she's moving. You can idle it down pretty far once you get it moving. You can pretty much idle this thing around. It's a fun little thing to drive, I will say. It's very reliable. Very easy to use. And any average person can work on this. And she stalled out because we got the throttle a little too low, but... Ugh. Anyway. Jump down here and we'll go over a few more things. Something else that was asked was, can this thing go over five miles an hour? Because, well, it's gear reducted up here and then it's got gear reduction rear end. Yes, it will go over five miles an hour. It actually does 10. I took it around the block after I got it going, give, gave it all it's got and 10 mile an hour. I was honestly amazed. Uh, losing my train of thought, but anyway, this here, most old tractors came with this. This is a 48. But anyway, this here, for all you youngsters out there that don't know what this is, crank start. Just go up here and you'd push this in and you crank this thing over. You know, just get it to start. 
as usually if you didn't pay for the electric start which this is not going to be hooked up and they all still had batteries and stuff like that for your lights but this was if your battery is dead or you didn't have the um, starter option and this lines up perfectly that so I'm going to be building another thing's going to come across here it's going to go underneath that shaft that's going to allow us to use this to start that and it's going to be pretty cool I will say now as for the air filter on this thing I'm actually going to be doing away with the stock one I'm not a fan of it I'm going to actually run it down through here and it's going to hook up to this and this is going to be our air filter from now on right here now this thing still has all the mounts and stuff to put the cultivator mounts on i'm going to buy a set and then i'm going to try and find the cultivator that goes on it for next year when we plant our garden and also one of the things that if you're going to do a project like this and it's going to have to sit outside for a little bit because i know mine did because well we had to get the engine pulled out had to free up both wheels so we could move it invest in the shifter boot just i just highly i highly recommend that take a pair of vice grips and get the knob off if you can't screw it off just i highly recommend that because i let this thing sit outside for just a few weeks and here in ohio it rains pretty regularly and the shifter boot on this thing was so rotten and all that water that would come down here and leak down the shifter ended up in this transmission so yeah you don't want a bunch of water in your transmission especially with the temperatures we get here in ohio especially in the winter because right now it's technically winter but this whole thing it's it's pretty cool to have i've had people well, offer me money for it but it's it's kind of like you know i've i've built this thing it's it's hard to get rid of now and I've even got like the new sediment bowl and all that, all these new old sock parts installed now to finally make this thing back the way it was supposed to be just under, I guess you could say new management or new power, whatever you want to call it. But everything does work. I am going to put, I am going to be building a radiator, not actually, it's just going to be filled to concrete and that's going to get me some weight up front here. Now I know someone's probably seen it already. This front tire is completely blown out, and I probably shouldn't be driving it with it. That's why we aren't going 10 miles an hour right now. Otherwise, I'd take the thing off the street and show y'all. But, everything is in perfect working order at the moment. And it is awesome. Now, I know someone's going to be wondering this, because I know I was. Does the wet clutch work? No, unfortunately. It does not work. But I am going to eventually have this whole tractor taken apart. And I'm going to fix it. And someone else has probably seen already. My custom seat fix. Because I don't know. I'm not, I'm not paying $120 for a shock on a tractor that's sitting on rusty rims. And you know. Maybe eventually when I restore the whole tractor. But honestly, the tractor's in good enough shape where it doesn't even really need restore. It just needs a little bit of love. But that's pretty much it for this whole thing. And uh, I don't know. First, what, what do you want to see me do with this thing? I'm definitely going to get the three-point hitch put on this thing so we can go play with the York Rake, the Bush Hog, and all the other attachments we've got. So, what all you want to see from this thing next? Because I've got a lot of ideas. I just don't know what y'all want me to do. It's definitely going to go through its paces to the point of where a little while after this video, like a week or two, this thing's getting loaded up on a trailer and it's going to the farm where we will make more content with this and definitely put it through its paces. And not have one single issue whatsoever at least i don't think we will i'm jinxing myself on that 
but I don't think we'll have a single issue with this thing. Because, whoa, goodness, dropping my phone. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this whole deal. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, and stay tuned for whatever we do with this thing next.